I'm Laura Cobbold from Amadeus's communications team, and it's a pleasure to be your moderator for this call. Our first information session about the safe travel ecosystem took place in December last year. Over the last seven months, we have worked closely together with many industry players to develop solutions that will help to rebuild travel. For today, we have invited some of our spokespeople and partners to show you how we're combining innovative IT solutions with our partner and customer network to support the emerging health requirements in the global travel industry. This global and collaborative safe travel initiative was born under the leadership of Monica Wiederhold. Monica now holds dual roles as EVP Ecosystem Initiatives, as well as Country Manager for Germany. And Christian Warneck has taken the leadership of safe travel, which sits within Monica's ecosystem remit. Both continue to drive this program to shape the travel ecosystem of the future. Therefore, it's a pleasure to say hello to Monica and Christian. So, please tell our customers what's behind this safe travel ecosystem and how will it support the traveler journey? Thank you, Laura, and a warm welcome to the second session on the safe travel ecosystem. And I really would like to open the session with a bold claim, and that is we are in the biggest collaboration exercise ever of the industry. So of course, collaboration has been around for a while and the wish to end technological silos, to bridge solutions, uh, to create seamless travel experience has been a vision for years. And in a way it's ironic that it needed a global catastrophe or a pandemic to become a catalyst actually for a fully new level of collaboration, all of which is targeted towards to make safe travel again. And our ideas we have identified very early on three solution categories which will be needed in this new context. And those categories are travelers need information before the journey and during the journey. Second category is touchless technology to avoid physical interactions as much as possible. And number three, we need solutions to verify health documentation of travelers, a topic that has heavily disrupted a lot of the processes specifically in the airport and airline environment. So for the solution categories, we collaborated a lot and we drove a whole initiative over the last seven months is one KPI. And the leading KPI in this initiative is speed. Speed to get ready once that travel comes back at scale. Speed to get ready to serve the travelers, to serve the industry customers, really make travel possible again and gain travelers trust. And just to name one example, which I like very much, the traveler ID for safe travel solution to validate health documentation from the idea to have the first airline in production, it was just five months. So in April, we had the first airline live, and now we have more than 10 airlines in production and more are coming week after week. So this fast and, and very agile approach really paid off. And it was only possible, and I come back to the bold statement, it was only possible with this biggest collaboration exercise approach, which we followed early on, by working together with many partners, with many teams around the globe and connect and exchange to the benefit of the industry, to the benefit of the customers. And looking back to December in our first information session, we had a lot of challenges around. We had a lot of ideas, um, approaches uh, being, becoming visible, emerging. Now we have already a lot of solutions and those solutions start to become harmonized they start to be interconnected and interoperable. And that is a great situation to be in. And therefore it's my pleasure to hand over to Christian, our new head of the Safe Travel Ecosystem Initiative to show you the solutions and to introduce you what's happening in Amadeus and in the industry. So Christian, over to you. Thank you, Monica. Good morning and good afternoon to the audience. Back in December, 2020, I presented to you the solutions which are needed along the traveler journey 
to remove the friction the pandemic had put to travel. Today, I'd like to share with you how we progressed together with partners in the safe travel ecosystem. Let's take a look at the traveler journey. As Monica mentioned, the first point is to have informed travelers, but also informed travel sellers and informed travel providers. With our partner Riskline, we have integrated the country regulations in all major touch points along the traveler journey. This is in end consumer applications like Check My Trip, but also into the airline call center applications, into the corporate booking tools, into the retail and business travel travel agencies. Recently, we launched an API to this country regulation database as part of our self-service portal Amadeus for Developers. You simply sign up, create your account, and then you can access all of the country regulations in a structured format, which you then can consume in a digital way. But there are also country uh, measures, not country, but measures which the travel providers have put in place for a safe travel. So like the airlines have put in place measures on masks on board, distancing and other measures. And we integrated those measures which the airlines can file by themselves into their file fairing system. Again, into the airline call center products, into the corporate self booking tools and into our travel agency products. The hotels have also put in place safety measures like an enhanced safety protocol. And you can also search and display for those hotels which have put in extra safety measures if a traveler wants to select explicitly those hotels. This is also included into our web services so that, um, that online travel agencies can have the same information about the hotels. If we move a step further onto this traveler journey, then when it comes to the time of the booking, we are working on storing the newly created vaccination certificates, which mostly come in form of a QR code into the booking itself in a safe way so that we don't have health information in the booking record, of course, uh, like we do for credit card information uh, with encryption. Um, and this can be also stored in the traveler profile so that the traveler don't needs to show up with its vaccination certificate every time he wants to do a flight. Before arriving at the airport, it's important to remind the passenger about the travel regulations as they might have changed from the time of the booking. But also to remind him that if he's not vaccinated, he may have a test or in some cases needs to have a test even being vaccinated. This is either something which the traveler can get from their mobile application or the travel agency can reach out to their travelers by making sure they're having the right information prior to departure. And we're integrating that into the airline's channels very soon. On the test areas, when you need to make a test prior to departure, we're integrating as we speak, the capabilities for travel agencies to book test appointments for their travelers. This is especially useful when you're abroad. Maybe the most complicated piece is to make sure that your health status is verified prior to boarding a plane. And we have worked on integrating various digital health providers as partners into our ecosystem and connecting them to the airline system so that the airline can block or unblock boarding or backdrop if the health status has been cleared or hasn't been cleared um, at the self-service check-in. So prior to arriving at the airport. We have a number of touchless solutions which are now being rolled out more quickly than before, like um, self-service backdrops, like biometric boarding and touchless solutions for where you have touched a touch screen before, which travelers don't want to do any longer. If you haven't cleared your health data prior to arriving at the airport, you can still do at the airport and the airline agents at the gate have an application to scan your boarding pass 
scan your health status or manually clear it so that you can use the self-boarding gates again. And the next step of the traveler journey, it may happen that it comes to a disruption. Your flight is delayed or your flight needs to be changed. In that case, we have the information of the health status, whether it's still valid for a delayed flight or for a changed flight. And if so, we can transfer this health clearance to the other flight without the need of the passenger to provide the health status clearance again. This is also useful for interlining and works there uh, pretty nicely. And at destination, we have tools that the travel agent can reach out to their travelers and informing them in case the country regulations have changed or a new risk has arisen. And with that, I'd like to hand back to my colleague, Laura. Thank you, Monica and Christian. Next, we'll be hearing from Hervé Prezé, VP Industry and Expertise at Amadeus, and Suzanne Sangevise, Commercial and Communications Director from our partner RiskLine, both of whom will discuss the safe travel capabilities available in our travel seller and corporate solutions. Hello, I'm Hervé Prezé, Head of Industry and Expertise at Amadeus. So I want to talk about what travelers need to know today and how they know it. This is such a key topic because if there is one thing that we have learned last year and again through our surveys this year, it's that information is immensely important for travelers. And this certainly refers to information about rules and regulations, but not only. It also refers to concern of travelers whether their flight will be safe, for example, or whether the hotel follows certain safety protocols, etc. So let's first look at some figures that show how important traveler information has become. In a survey done by PricewaterhouseCoopers, 85% said that their travel decision depend on communication about safety. And what is notable here is that travelers expect not just to find information somewhere, but they expect communication about these things. In the same way, we had 80% saying in a survey done by us, that they expect the travel agent to engage with them at least once before on the trip. And this year, we looked even deeper into this topic and asked travelers which technology they think will help them the most to increase confidence. And 45% said that mobile apps with on suite notifications and alerts would really help them. So travelers urgently want assistance now, not only for trip planning and booking, they also want real-time support when they are on their destination. And this is a huge opportunity for travel sellers to position themselves and most of all, to support travelers in a very practical way. Now, let's look at what kind of information travelers need now. When searching for travel options, they need information about general rules and around safety measures. For example, whether they can travel to a certain destination at all, whether there is a quarantine or not, on how the situation is there. They usually, also want information about what safety measures airline and other travel providers have in place. Then after the booking and before the trip start, normally two things come up. First, they now need more detailed information about exactly what kind of health proof are required. Then a few days before the trip start, many people wonder whether they are really have everything they need, whether they are really set to travel. And during the trip, we already saw that travelers want to be alerted immediately in case something changes unexpectedly. For example, if risk level in their destination suddenly change. These are just basic information needs. And what's important to mention is that they all are potential interaction points with a travel seller, which means that this is also a chance to be in contact with the traveler, to be of support and become the reliable go-to partner for the next trip. Now, I don't want to end up without giving you at least some example for how we practically support travel sellers in providing all the necessary information to their travelers. When we look at the search phase, we provide country heat maps with detailed information about rules on country level and even up to city level. And both for airlines and hotels, we have detailed information about their safety measures, which can be retrieved with just a click. All of this is freely accessible in our Sailing Platform Connect. 
We also include this kind of information in our business travel and corporate solution, like in Sitewick, where the business traveler can retrieve this information directly. When it comes to the time after booking and before the trip, travelers now need even more detailed information. We have included this into, for example, mobile solution, as you can see here, with Check My Trip. Again, it's both included in our leisure and business mobile products. Or it is also possible to use our system, like travel alert notifier, and send a reminder about the requirements before the trip via email, which you can see on the right here. Finally, travel sellers do have the possibility to alert travelers in case of emergencies, for example, in case of change risk levels. This is possible through our mobile messenger, where you can send push notifications in case of such an emergency which is, of course, especially important when it comes to business, travel, and duty of care. So here you see the agents front end on the upper left and the travel alert on the right. I have to limit now to these three examples, just to give you an inspiration on how travel sellers can fulfill their important role within the safe travel ecosystem and how we support them. In order to bring destination information and traveler alerts into the different front end, we have partnered with RiskLine, who are the world leading provider for risk travel intelligence. And so it's my pleasure now to hand over to Suzanne from RiskLine, who will give us an exciting insight into how such important data is sourced and processed and how they work. A warm welcome, Suzanne, and over to you. Thank you so much, Hervé, and thank you to Amadeus for the invitation to speak here today about RiskLine and how we have been diligently working to provide COVID-19 intelligence data to help enable a safe return to travel effectively. Our mission at RiskLine has always been to care for travelers through technical innovation and human verification of risk assessments. It's an honor to partner with Amadeus and be part of the safe travel ecosystem to ensure we can all move travel forward together, stronger, and with as little friction as possible. I'd like to start to give a background on RiskLine and who we are. In short, we are a world-class travel risk management company, providing real-time alert messaging, country and city risk assessments, and COVID-19 intelligence to fulfill duty of care requirements, both before and during travel. We have been in operation since 2007. We're privately owned and headquartered in Copenhagen, Denmark. And today we work 24 seven, 365 as a geographically distributed team in more than 15 countries and across 11 different time zones. Our team is well-versed in travel risk intelligence. We have over a decade of experience in tracking crises around the world in real time long before the outbreak and pandemic began. We prepare travelers for not only what to expect before travel, but also the situation on the ground at their destination. So with this experience, we were well prepared to deal with and counter the infodemic that the COVID-19 pandemic created and the fast changing regulatory environment that came with the government responses. RiskLine has tracked the outbreak of SARS-CoV-2 and the COVID-19 pandemic since day one. We began monitoring the situation in late December 2019, and we sent out our first alert of a SARS-like outbreak in Wuhan, China on the 1st of January 2020. And we all know what happened next. The rest you can say is history, as our coverage of the pandemic grew and evolved in order to track the regulatory changes from entry and exit requirements to internal restrictions on travel and movement. So how did we do this? Well, first and foremost, with our global team of on the ground professional analysts who monitor open source intelligence 24 seven, 365 to make accurate and timely assessments. While mon monitoring hundreds of thousands of individual sources would be impossible, we employ a custom built news aggregator tool and a third party AI platform to aid our analysts in finding and being alerted to the right information at the right time, which is crucial. Our tools source only 100% official and reliable trustworthy sources, including official communication from 
governments, both at the national and local level, embassies and consulates, the WHO, the CDC, the European CDC, and Johns Hopkins Center for Health Security, just to name a few. All of our data assessments and reports are human verified and curated by our analytical team every hour of every day, ensuring that our API, which is one of the ways that we do transmit our data, contains the most up-to-date information. Analysts will ensure all information and data is verified by at least two official sources before entering an update. Through the verification process, a second analyst also reviews all policy changes, all the updates that are made before the data is saved. This means that we have thousands of human verification and validation checks every day, an average of 200 updates to our API, and more than 400 individual policy and regulation changes and updates each day. You can think of that as an average of an update every eight minutes. With analysts constantly monitoring the trends and regulatory changes, uh, the infection level changes, vaccine changes, we are strongly equipped to future-proof our data by anticipating what's to come next. This comes back to our experience of more than a decade tracking breaking events and crises as they happen around the world in real time. The core of the risk line DNA has always been to monitor and report on any situation that has an actual or potential impact on travel itineraries and or public safety. We have taken the same approach and applied it to our COVID-19 reporting. So let's speak a little bit more about what we include in our data and its structure. We cover over 220 countries and territories and track data also at the regional and city level. The data we provide allows users to go beyond just the basic requirements in order to ease travel anxiety with in-depth destination intelligence about what to expect on the ground in terms of lockdown or curfew orders, vaccine requirements, and internal regulations that may differ between administrative divisions. Now, how the data is structured, I also believe is extremely important because this means you can easily integrate it into any workflow type. Again, this is all about access to the right information at the right time. You do not want to be dealing with a single lengthy unstructured report of text that you'll need to spend time reading. As we all know, time is of the essence right now. Each second and minute counts. So this programmability also means scalability across multiple platforms and channels. And with scalability, we can counter this infodemic with consistency. It is crucial there is coherence and uniformity when it comes to intelligence. With this scalability, you are giving everyone within your own organization and your customers the same access to reliable intelligence each time, every time, and most importantly, in real time. At RiskLine, we take a human approach to everything we do, even with our data. To echo our mission again, having access to human verified data is critical when it comes to caring for travelers. And taking a collaborative approach to technical innovation is how we will get there faster together. So as we take back to the open skies, roads, seaways, and rail lines, we can remain confident in travel safety with this dedicated collaborative team blending consistent and up-to-date human intelligence with pioneering technical innovation. So thank you very much again to Amadeus for extending the invitation uh, to me here today to speak about RiskLine. Thank you for lending me your ears. Take care and stay safe. Thank you to Hervé and Suzanne for sharing your insight into the data and capabilities that are helping keep travel sellers and their travelers informed. We now go from agency bookings and travel management to the world of airports. In our next session, Raheel Hamid from our airport IT team focuses on how we're enabling a touchless journey for travelers when at the airport. Thank you for the introduction. 
Now, I'll be taking you through the uh, current airport situation and the uh, need for digital solutions in an airport environment. Airports, as we all know, play a crucial role in the context of safe travel. In an airport, we have passengers who are arriving, departing, or transiting through an airport. And we also have hundreds of staff who are working in an airport environment. So from an airport perspective, it's essential that they focus on the safety and well-being of the passengers, as well as the staff, as we work towards the gradual increase in flight operations. The focus needs to be on the perceived safety so that passengers feel safe and we can help instill confidence in these passengers. As per the recent IATA estimates, passengers pre-COVID spent on average of 1.5 hours in travel processes as part of their journey. This is starting from check-in all the way to package reclaim. In the present day, there's been deviations or variations from the uh, pre-existing processes and also have additional steps have been added where there's a need for agents to manually validate passenger health credentials and vaccine certificates. Now, this has resulted in a drastic increase in processing times and has had an effect on the overall passenger journey. As per the recent estimates, the average airport processing times has increased to up to three hours, with traffic volumes being at 30% of pre-COVID volumes. Now, IATA estimates that uh, without further improvements in these processes, the uh, average processing time for airport processes could increase up to 5.5 hours with traffic volumes returning to 75% of uh, pre-COVID volumes. This, in addition, could increase up to eight hours when traffic volumes return to 100% of pre-COVID levels. Now, let's take a step deeper and look into the overall passenger flows, how it has impacted and how it's uh, varied now with, uh, in, the, in the present day. Pre-COVID, the passenger flow was evenly distributed, where passengers would do different channels, be it online or web check-in, where we had 49% of passengers using these channels. Then you had around 18% of passengers using self-service channels, be it kiosk or backdrop. And only around 35% of these passengers had uh, a need to be processed manually by an agent at a check-in counter. In the present day, the automated processes in an airport are broken, Lots of airports and airlines have had to put their self-service equipments out of operation. What this resulted in is increased processing times at check-in and at border control. One of the estimates suggests that around 90% of airport staff are required to process 30% of these passengers. We also see there's a specific need to uh, perform additional health checks on arrivals. So this will further impact uh, the processing time for passengers leading to longer queues in, uh, in the immigration halls. To conclude, what we see is a need for a fully automated and integrated solution where passenger health credentials can be validated against the different uh, health providers. This will be necessary so that we can eliminate human-to-human uh, -human contact. There's no manual agent intervention needed to validate these credentials. It will also help us to re-enable the automatic passenger processing in an airport environment. What we further see is there are other perceived benefits when it comes to these digital certificates. This includes eliminating any fraudulent documentation. It also gives visibility to the different agencies on the passenger's eligibility to fly, even before these passengers arrive at an airport. To conclude, adoption of uh, digital processes will be key as we work towards uh, restarting travel. In the context of safe travel, Self-service can be a key enabler as it helps to reduce processing times at the airport, reduce queuing, and also eliminates any human-to-human -human contact. We in Amadeus manufacture and offer our own self-service solutions. In 2019, Amadeus acquired ICM, a global leader in self-service solutions. With ICM, we offer different self-service solutions. This includes three different variants of the self-service kiosks, we also offer replacement and retrofit type auto bag, uh, auto bag drop solutions, in addition to the biometric hardware. Biometric hardware includes the biometric camera modules, which can be integrated into the kiosks and uh, the backdrops. And we also offer um, biopods, which can be used for biometric processing at other touch points such as security, launch, and boarding. So far, we've processed over 100 million bags across 1,200 backdrop units that are deployed. 
So these backdrop units have been deployed across 26 airports, including some tier one airports such as Changi Singapore Airport, London Heathrow Airport, Paris Airports, Dubai Airports, and Narita Airport. Nonetheless, we see their passenger concerns and hesitations when it comes to using self-service hardware. So there's a need for us to eliminate uh, the need for passengers to touch self-service kiosks and backdrops. So we've developed a set of touchless solutions in order to address these needs. The passengers do not have to touch the self-service kiosks or backdrops. The first solution that I want to talk about is the Amadeus mobile trackpad, where a QR code is displayed to the passenger on the screen. Passengers can scan this QR code on their mobile phone, and there'll be a large cursor which is displayed to the passengers, as you can see in the, in the first image. And passengers can then continue with their self-service kiosk or their backdrop flow using their mobile phones without having to touch uh, the kiosk or the backdrop screens. The second solution that we have is the mobile remote control. So this remote control solution is an extension of the trackpad where the entire uh, kiosk or the backdrop screen is mirrored into the passenger's phone. The passengers can then continue with their check-in or their backdrop flow on their phone without having to touch the kiosk or the backdrops. The third solution, again, is related to touchless, where we offer a proximity sensor. That is, passengers do not have to physically touch the kiosk or the backdrop screens. Any passenger finger movements are captured by the infrared sensor and this is then converted into user inputs. The final solution that I have here is the auto back tag printing solution. These auto back tag printing solution will be useful for passengers who check in online. So passengers who check in online or over the web when they reach the airport and if they need to print their back tags, all they have to do is to scan their mobile boarding passes on these kiosks and uh, their back tags will be uh, printed after that. So there's no additional steps or checks that needs to be performed by the uh, passengers. On behind the scenes, what we do is we have all the necessary DCS integrations and we do all the necessary eligibility checks before we print these back tags. So once these back tags are printed, passengers can then collect these back tags, attach it to their bags and continue with their backdrop process. So this eliminates the passengers. Passengers do not have to touch the screens. Passengers do not have to have a manual agent intervention as they continue with their backdrop flows. In addition to that, we've also worked on several other initiatives, how we can be part, as part of the safe travel ecosystem. So we've integrated talk OK checks against the airline DCS as part of the backdrop processes. So these doc OK checks are set to indicate or check the eligibility of a passengers, whether they meet their specific health requirements. Talk OK check is set as a specific SSR code as part of the passenger booking. So only passengers who have uh, Doc OK check as part of their passenger booking in the DCS will be continued, will be allowed to continue in the backdrop flow. So this can be of advantage to uh, airports as well as for airlines, where it will help them to eliminate situations where you need to offload a specific passenger's bag from a baggage handling system or from an aircraft if it's identified at a later stage that they were not eligible to fly. We have similarly integrated these talk OK checks against the DCS as part of the passenger verification systems as well. So as part of this, passengers who are not eligible uh, to fly, that is they don't have the talk OK check set in their booking in uh, DCS, will not be allowed, will be restricted access to certain airport touch points. So as part of passenger verification, we uh, perform checks against the airline DCS and we can restrict access to certain areas of the airport. So with this, what we could do is we could restrict access to airside, we could restrict access to passengers to enter the terminal, so that this way we can help to increase uh, passenger confidence in the overall airport process. Amadeus also offers an end-to-end -end, uh, biometric solution. These biometric solutions are integrated into the passenger journey. So this biometric solutions includes biometric hardware, uh, such as the biometric camera module, which is integrated in our kiosks and our backdrop units, and also biopods, which can be used for processing at the touch points, starting from security all the way towards boarding. Biometric software includes uh, biometric enrollment, one-to-one uh, -one and one-to-one -one matching algorithms, as well as our identity management platforms. 
to the biometric solutions once a passenger is enrolled across any of the touch points, be it off airport mobile enrollment or on airport at self service kiosks or on backdrops. They can then be biometrically matched across all the other touch points, starting from check in all the way to boarding. With this, it offers an end to end seamless passenger flow and helps, uh, helps us to eliminate uh, any manual agent interventions. And also, passengers do not have to uh, have manual redundant document checks that needs to be performed. In the context of safe travel, we also feel that there's potential additional use cases where these biometric solutions can be expanded to. It could be for hotels, for cruises, for also staff access in the future. Thank you, Rahil. It's great to understand more about the passenger journey and how it can be improved through technology. For our next session, we go back to Christian, who will be describing the importance of integration to deliver solutions that work across the industry. Thank you, Laura. I mentioned the friction the pandemics have put to travelers on the travel journey. And one of the friction is to prove your health status is okay to travel. This is maybe the most complex part in the safe travel ecosystem. Let's take a back look back at the situation which we had in December, 2020. At that time, vaccinations around the world had just started. There was no proof necessary to board a plane, whether it's being a test or a vaccination and the health status was entirely on paper. Early 2021, the first solutions on digital health status, mainly around tests, have been in pilot mode. And we had about four providers which offered a solution which was building a trust network to labs and then creating a digital proof of evidence of your test results. In spring 2021, we have seen an explosion of health pass solutions around the world in different areas from private sector, but also from the public sector. And we've seen around 50 different initiatives worldwide, maybe even more. The first airlines have started to explore the potential, but the adoption was rather low at that point of time. If we look at today, then we see digital health platforms aggregating digital health passports to cope with the amount which I mentioned before. And as Amadeus, we've put in place a seamless integration of several digital health partners into our airline boarding and check-in systems. We have extended that not only on digital solutions, but also to cope with paper, which we either scan and then search for the information or can hand over to an airline back office for manual processing. If we look at what's happening now, we see that governments have taken the control over the digital solutions. This is true, especially for vaccination, because they want to have a digital vaccination certificate, which is okay to travel, um, but they were also aiming on reducing the fraud, which we've seen with paper and aimed at one single solution per country for test results and for lab connectivity. The majority of those formulas have moved into a QR code, which is self-contained. So the data is visible, but it has been digitally signed to protect fraud. And one of the examples is the European Union Digital COVID Certificate, which has created a format for a full region, not only the member states of the European Union, but we see more and more countries um, signing up for this format, on, even on the America side and on the APAC region. And as Amadeus, we've included the European Union Digital COVID Certificate already into our um, processes of the self-service check-in for the airlines, and this is in production today. Now we also see several initiatives to harmonize the various QR codes for vaccinations and tests and recovery 
which have been created by the governments and by the private sector across the world. One of them is ICAO, which is aiming at creating one format for the travel industry. Another one is the Good Health Pass initiative, uh, aiming at making those QR codes interoperable by converting them into a format which can be exchanged. Amadeus is a member of the Good Health Pass initiative, and we support the industry here with our expertise. But the goal which we want to see is a mutual acceptance of the different national standards. Uh, this is what needs to be resolved on the political level, like we've seen in the European Union, but also on the uh, G20. We've seen that talks about that. And the World Health Organization is also coming up with a proposal how that could be harmonized. If we look at the next two challenges, then the first one is interoperability and mutual acceptance of the various QR codes, as I just mentioned. As we have integrated various digital health platforms and partners into our self-service check-in solution, we uh, can read, for example, a Canadian QR code and um, also the European Union DCC and therefore create the interoperability as such with the digital acceptance if political mutual acceptance is there. The second challenge is around the different country regulations. If you look again at only the European Union, which have a common format, there are no two countries which have put in place the same country regulations in their rule sets. So it's important that we maintain uh, and harmonize here, if possible, the rules with our partner risk line and that we foresee changes coming and include them in the data, like the vaccines being accepted by which country. With this, I'd like to hand over to my dear colleague, Francois Blanc, Managing Director Traveler Identity Services at Amadeus. Thank you, Christian, for the invitation. It's uh, really exciting to be back here and report on the progress we've made. Uh, when we last spoke in December last year, we decided to work with an ecosystem of partners to mitigate the operational complexity that the COVID crisis has created. I'll take the striking example of airline operation around the globe. As uh, Christian has pointed out, many have been asked to verify their passenger COVID situation when they come to the airport to board on the flight. And this has totally broken the self-service check-in process. So just a bit of context on this self-service check-in process. It's here for nearly two decades to help airline passengers provide the required travel information a few days before coming to the airport. And uh, in a pre-COVID year, you'll get maybe 2 billion passengers doing self-service check-in. So they have a shorter queue at the airport. And all of this was broken when airlines had to check the COVID situation of their passengers in the airport. Do they have the right test done at the right time for this particular trip or the right vaccine, for example? So uh, the industry will start this process in very manual ways, creating significant queues at the airport. To give you an idea, some airlines told us that with only 30, 40 percent of the traffic, they needed something like 90 percent of their staff to operate this process. And uh, in some cases, the time to verify passenger situation could be as uh, much as four times the time it used to take before. And now if you multiply uh, two billion of self service check-in by, say, 30 minutes of queuing, and let you imagine the order of magnitude of the impact as travel ramps up again. But you uh, heard it from Christian just earlier. We have worked with many partners to make this work again in a uh, as seamless way as possible. And I'm happy to report that uh, three months post the launch of this initiative, live now with more than 10 airlines, uh, we have many more comings to benefit from this uh, self-service checking automation once again. So in this session, I'll give you two perspectives on the progress we are making. Uh, the first one will be from the traveler point of view, and the second one from the airline and airport staff point of view. 
But let me start with the travel. And for this, I'm going to play a very short video, uh, video just one minute, so we can all visualize the experience of this traveler ID for safe travel. As air travel returns, airlines face the difficult challenge of handling health requirements and managing queues at the airport. For this, Amadeus announces Traveler ID for Safe Travel, a new solution that allows travelers to confirm their health documentation seamlessly in their airline's existing digital touch points, such as their airline's app or web portal. Prior to departure, travelers receive a notification with health requirement information for their journey. Traveler ID for Safe Travel makes it easy for travelers to confirm that they meet the requirements in just minutes by taking a photo of the health certificate or uploading the file, scanning its QR code or accessing info from a digital health pass. And thanks to the Amadeus Airport companion app, airline agents can quickly assist travelers at the airport following the same simple process using tablet devices. Easy to use and seamlessly integrated with existing processes, Traveler ID for safe travel eases the passenger process and is giving airlines, airports, and most importantly, travelers, the peace of mind and freedom to enjoy their journey. Uh, look, there are two things that uh, makes the whole team uh, supporting this initiative really proud of. Uh, the first one is that we are collectively going to give back to travelers millions of hours back, millions of hours that they would have otherwise lost to Queen. Uh, travelers, as you saw in the video, are given clarity what is required from them when they travel to a particular destination. Um, and all of this comes from the airline, a brand they know often for decades and that they trust. There's no need to download any kind of third party uh, application for that. And uh, travelers as well are given the choice, the choice to use a paper certificate uh, or one of these digital wallets, which are mobile application that can store proof of testing or vaccination on a mobile application. We support both options. And to check in ahead of the airport and reduce uh, the queuing time, or either as well the choice to check in at the airport, shall you wish to do this. And the second thing, that make us all very proud is that this really is a collaborative effort across many companies who have joined forces to support the industry restart again at scale. You saw uh, in this video some of these companies we work with and we work with many more, for example, to support local or regional requirements for specific digital uh, vaccination certificates, QR codes, or, or whatever. Now, let's take a look at the impact on the airline and airport side of the operation. The problem we tackled in December last year was twofold. A, airline needed to bring back automation to check-in. And as I told you earlier, some airlines told us that with only 30, 40% of the passenger traffic they used to have, they needed 90% of the staff to process the COVID status verification in the airport. And now, what if traffic comes back to 60, 70% or more than it used to be? And the second challenge was the need to cover many different and changing local requirements. Reason why we choose to work in collaboration with many local and regional partners. For the airline, we have already activated the Traveler ID for Safe Travel Solution. Here is what we hear back a few months after the launch. A, self-service check-in works again. Just a few months after the launch, will help airline process hundreds of thousands of traveler verification ahead of the airport, resulting in shorter queues and improved traveler satisfaction, as you can imagine. Some of the airlines we support have been able to activate this service on most of their return flight, for example, for checking that their travelers we're coming back to their country of origin with the right COVID status. Secondly, what we hear is there's a range of options to pick from to adjust to the specificities of my business. We offer through the solution, self-certification forms, digital passenger location forms, 
paper or digital wallet for storing your COVID test or vaccination certificate and more. In particular, we heard from airline always a bit of hesitation from choosing a specific digital health platform. But with this solution, we include many, so airline have the choice and can change their mind over time with no additional integration required, plus flexibility for the airline. And thirdly, we hear as well the confidence in our ability at Amadeus and with the ecosystem we work with to stay on top of the global and local requirements and to integrate all the moving parts of such a complex IT solution. I just let you imagine how interesting it gets in the case of flight with multiple legs across different countries with different requirements. I'm getting carried away too much. You can feel the passion we all have for the travel industry and for solving this particular challenge of our time. Maybe if there was two things to take away from this session, I would make them these two. A, as promised in December, um, when we run a similar session as this one, we have mobilized a wide range of regional and local companies to build together a solution enabling airlines to streamline their traveler compliance to COVID. And the result is here with hundreds of thousands of travelers already skipping the COVID queues in the airport. And two, uh, we are not going to stop here. Uh, we are adding features on a monthly basis to support the evolving, changing local and regional requirement. So stay tuned and obviously stay safe. Have a great day. Thank you, Francois. We'd now like to open up for questions. If we can't get to your question, we'll answer in writing after the webinar. So we've been receiving some, some quite interesting questions coming through, through the Q&A. Thank you very much to everyone. Um, and the first question I'm going to share with you, Christian. Um, the first question is saying that there are already some health passports around, such as Common Pass or IATA's Travel Pass. And, and what's the benefit of your solution in comparison to these? Let me start with the perspective of the traveler. So the traveler is used to go to the website of the airline he booked in order to check in. And by doing the integration into the airline's check-in, whether mobile or web touchpoint, the traveler don't need to go uh, to another application or to another platform to get his health status cleared. Of course, he can use other digital health wallets if he has to, but it's his choice. The second view is maybe the airline view. With the airline, they can use their self-service check-in to make sure that the passenger gets the information that he can check in with a digital health clearance before he arrives at the airport. So this is really the benefit of offloading the manual work at the airport outside before arriving there. And as Amadeus, we're connecting to several digital health platforms to provide the choice to the airlines and to the traveler. Thank you, Christian. Um, so I'm, I'm going to ask you another question, actually, um, which is it's a bit linked to um, what you were talking about with Francois earlier. And it's how does the integration of the EU digital COVID certificate work for the traveller? So we have fully integrated the EU digital COVID certificate. It's a self-contained QR code, so you can read the data. And of course, we need to make sure that the validity of the test result, a recovery, or a vaccination with a specific uh, combination of vaccines is accepted for this journey and the destination country at the point of departure. The EU DCC, as it's also called, can be either scanned from your piece of paper while checking in, or you can provide it in a file format, whether that's from your gallery or whether you have it as a PDF or whether you want to share it from a wallet at the self-service check-in point. Thanks, Christian. So Monica, I'm going to come to you next. Um, we've got a, an interesting question saying, why do we call safe travel an ecosystem? And is Amadeus in the lead? Um, and what about other providers or, or competitors? in this ecosystem. Okay, thank you. Well, we, we, 
we chose to call it an ecosystem because we think safe travel is bigger than a single solution or, or a single company. You know? It's really um, beyond and it's about creating a frictionless travel experience, connecting a lot of players, a lot of partners and enable frictionless and seamless travel in the new context. So that's why, why we really think it takes a lot of, a lot of partners to, to create this new, new way of travel. Um, and that's why we think we are not leading this ecosystem. I think nobody can lead an ecosystem. Uh, we are more in the role or even responsibility to connect the ecosystem. Now, given our technological position, we really feel responsible for connecting um, and integrating the um, maybe the traditional silos. And by design, it is a collaborative approach. Right? It's really a collaborative approach of connecting. And that's why we work so closely with a lot of the emerging players, existing partners, uh, like digital health pass providers, uh, Yata, Travel Pass One, Common Pass, IBM Health Pass, others, um, but also laboratories or um, standards which are evolving. Christian just mentioned the, the uh, or just answered the question on digital health certificate of the European Union. So all of this has to be collaboratively integrated and connected. And it's, again, a collaborative approach, not a competitive one. And it's an integration approach, not an own solutioning and adding other silos or apps to something. I hope that answers the question. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you, Monica. That's um, and I've got one one last question for you as well, Monica, which is um, it's again looking ahead. So it says, um, you know, what do you think is our is our most difficult task or challenge to get travel going again and to return to pre-COVID levels? Well, the the number one is actually the the speed required to deliver solutions that work at scale around the globe. Uh, I think this is a huge and complex task and it has to be solved very fast to enable the restart of travel, the recovering volumes. And that's really, I would say, uh, a huge challenge, not only for Madeus, but for the whole industry and, and politicians involved. And um, yeah, we talked a lot about collaboration. The collaboration and the interoperability required both on an organizational level, but also on a technological level is something which I will still consider as, an, as a challenge, uh, as it really requires a new level of collaboration and integration. Uh, and that's difficult. Yeah, so that's, uh, um, yeah, something we have to, to manage. Thank you, very, very interesting answers. Um, so, I mean, thank you to all of our participants for, for sending through some really great questions. I, I'm afraid we haven't had enough time to, to answer all of them. Um, but we will answer them in writing after the call. And um, just a, a brief note to all attendees that once the call closes, um, some survey questions will pop up for you. We encourage you to please answer them because it will really help us to improve next time. And it'll only take one minute. So now finally, Christian, I hand over to you for some closing remarks. I'd like to conclude by pointing your interest on two learnings of this webinar today. One is the sheer amount of solutions which have arised since end of last year with our partners in a collaborative way in this safe travel ecosystem. The second learning is about uh, the uh, changes which we're going to see. It's a fluid environment. Monica mentioned speed. We need to keep the speed and uh, cope with the changes which are happening there. I'd like to invite you to join us in either by reaching out to us via email or by joining us into our LinkedIn group where you can take a picture of the QR code now and then you're right into the Safe Travel Ecosystem LinkedIn group or go to our website and you will find more information there in different languages. Thank you very much for joining us today. Stay safe, take care, have a good day and goodbye.